You are watching Confusion TV. Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. In recent years, you've probably been hearing a lot of hype about deep learning. But what is it really all about? And here's another curious question. Why has deep learning only now just come into the spotlight, seemingly from nowhere? In this video, we'll answer these questions and learn the impacts that deep learning has on our world. There will also be a guest appearance from Justin Schenk, who has worked as a contractor for Intel. Finally, we'll take a look at some cutting-edge deep learning applications that are happening right now. Let's get into it. For most people, the terms AI, machine learning, and deep learning are interchangeable. Before continuing, it's important that we make some concrete definitions. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is an umbrella term for a branch of computer science. Its aim is for machines to mimic human cognition with a focus on complex problem solving. Machine learning is a subset of AI. It focuses on how to make computers learn on their own without the need for hand-coded instructions. Machine learning systems analyze vast amounts of data and learn from previous mistakes. The result is an algorithm that completes its task effectively. Deep learning, which is what we're going to be focusing on, is a subset within machine learning. This technology attempts to mimic the activity of neurons in our brains using matrix mathematics. This arrangement is called a neural network and dates all the way back to 1957. The modern and more complex networks are known as deep networks, but weren't proven practical until around 2012. So to answer the second question, why has deep learning only just come about now? Deep networks have only become feasible because of two reasons, an increase in computing power and vast amounts of data. Since the introduction of the first Intel chip in 1971, the number of transistors have roughly doubled every two years. This doubling of transistors on the chip essentially means an exponential increase in computing power. This idea was first proposed by Gordon Moore, co-founder of Intel, and is commonly referred to as Moore's Law. From the mid-2000s, computers became powerful enough to make neural networks perform, but the lack of training data meant that these nets couldn't be used for anything actually useful. And this brings us to the second point. The explosion of the internet eventually led to vast amounts of data that could be used for training purposes. So why do neural networks need so much data? Essentially, the more data there is, the more robustly the network can be trained. Put yourself in the shoes of a deep learning network trying to recognize a cat, for example. If you've only seen three cats, you'd only have a few camera angles and lighting conditions to work with. Something as simple as seeing a cat from a different angle or in a different light would throw you off. But on the other hand, if you'd seen thousands of different cats, you'd have a much easier time recognizing one. This is the importance of data. Computers aren't as intuitive as humans and need more examples. In the field of deep learning, data is the essence that allows machines to learn. You could look at it this way. If data is a new form of oil, the internet is a huge oil reserve and deep learning systems are the machines that run on this data. So the true field of deep learning all began in 2012. In this year, deep learning exploded into the spotlight when an artificial neural network was used in the competition to recognize the world's biggest data set of images. It was the first time a neural network was used in this competition and it blew all previous types of algorithms out of the water. At this moment, the world realized that deep nets were useful after all. This was the birth of the modern AI movement. Thanks to the exponential growth of computing power and the vast amounts of data, deep learning networks have gained the ability to recognize objects and translate speech in real time. They're everywhere from our phones to smart home systems. But that's all the stuff that you've heard before. The thing that many people may not know is that deep learning's impact is far wider than most people think. Vast amounts of data can be found in all corners of industry. Deep learning affects anything from oil exploration to energy grids, social media information, medical records, code compiling, server farm power management, border policing, and so on. The organization and interpretation of this data is very useful to businesses at all levels. The problem though, is that this data is unlabeled and unstructured. This means that it can't be used to train machine learning programs that depend on supervised instructions. Deep learning networks can avoid this drawback because they excel at labelless, unsupervised learning, especially when it comes to prediction and pattern recognition. To explain further, let's hear from Justin Schenk. Hi, my name is Justin Schenk. I'm an AI researcher at Peltarion and an Intel software innovator. 
So deep learning, it's quite inspired by an understanding of the brain, the neural network idea. We can compare it also in terms of its ability to learn certain uh, representations. And the brain, for example, is at a, at a young age, a child can learn a word after hearing it only one or two times. And that's considered amazing for machine learning standards uh, to be able to generalize from very few instances of data. So deep learning allows us to find patterns in also relatively limited data, making generalizations. That's, uh, that's one of the amazing things about deep learning. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the emerging hardware for deep learning. The Intel Movidius Neural Compute Stick is Intel's effort to provide deep learning on the go. Simply put, it's a standard USB drive that plugs into a computer that enables rapid prototyping of deep neural network interface applications locally. That is, it doesn't require users to connect to the cloud. So if you have a, a drone, for example, that uh, is flying over the water and trying to see if anyone is drowning to drop them a life preserver, you want that to be able to compute what it sees in real time without having to send that data back to some server. Intel has also purchased Nirvana systems for $400 million. Nirvana chips are said to be able to transfer data in and out at about 2.4 terabytes per second at a very low latency. That's supposed to be about 10 times faster than traditional chips. If we leave the rest of Apple aside for a moment, the neural engine in the iPhone X's A12 Bionic chip is impressive. It signifies a shift towards deep learning being local and integral to mobile capabilities. Uber, an Uber Eats deep learning system called Michelangelo, enables the cars to arrive on time by analyzing data from millions of previous trips and applying it to your specific situation. It also knows where all the drivers are and what trips they're completing at any particular time. It uses this information to calculate which optimum driver should pick you up. How else do you think the cars arrive so quickly? The technology is also making personal healthcare easier. Data from wearables provide patient-specific information directly to their healthcare professionals. Deep learning can even help predict a range of diseases by analyzing eyeball retinas, or it can diagnose eye or other diseases as accurately as doctors. Marking a milestone inside this hospital in Shenzhen in southern China, doctors here getting a hand from artificial intelligence. For example, we have 50 images. The AI system will sort them and select pictures showing a high possibility of cancer. We only need to check five selected images for a diagnosis. AI is able to learn from numerous amounts of data. That's what humans can't do. Now the accuracy of early detection of esophageal cancer has reached 90%, roughly the same level of diagnosis made by human doctors. Since the launch, it's served 400,000 patients. Right now it detects breast cancer and prostate cancer, but it could also work on any other cancer type that we train models for team of pathologists that went through thousands of images teaching the computer what cancer cells look like. It's going to make the doctors much quicker, they're going to make them better, which is going to overall benefit the patient. The mission is to increase the accuracy and availability of cancer diagnosis and save people's lives. I can hardly think of anything that's, that's more motivating. MRI, CT and EEG scan data is used to learn patterns and diagnose diseases such as cancer and heart disease. It seems like there's almost no limit to what deep networks can achieve in the healthcare industry. Okay, so let's look at some more fascinating new possibilities from just the past six months or so that have just been made possible through deep neural networks. So style transfer is something already known to most of you, taking the style of one artistic image and imposing it on something completely different. But what about motion transfer? This is now recently possible. A recent neural network can take a professional dancer and transpose their motion onto people who, well, can't dance. Take a look. A similar thing has been done with animals for potential use in video games. This neural network that's controlling this arm learns to pick up objects in a very real way. 
It can't just use its hand to pick up the object because the object is too wide and its grasp can't fit. In order to complete the task, it actually had to demonstrate learning and figure out that it had to break up the object before it could pick it up. Another recent neural net uses the data it receives from Wi-Fi signals bouncing off humans to see their motion in the dark. How about generating an animated face just from an outline? Deep neural nets also help in denoising. Usually cleaning up an image like this is very labor intensive or impossible. It can now be done in an instant with neural networks. This has obvious applications for cleaning up low light images and smartphone cameras, but can also remove other noise, including randomly generated text. It's important to note that while doing all of this, the network had no access to the original photos. It doesn't stop there though. A pair of neural networks working together in the same system managed to give super resolution to pixelated images. It's not hard to see how this network and the previous noise reduction network could be used to bring perfect photos to anyone. Just look at the detail extracted in these shots. Imagine having a choppy video at a few frames per second and then creating super slow motion just from that. This is now possible thanks to some neural networks by NVIDIA. The network was trained on thousands of videos, so it learned what made a good slow motion video, and now it can apply its learned knowledge to any video. The problem of deep fakes has now been tackled by neural nets. I mentioned this as a solution in my deep fakes video, and a lot of people argued that it couldn't be done, but a few months later, here we are. And to round off, we have some new artistic neural net hallucinations. Pretty interesting to look at. So what can we say in conclusion? DeepNets as a technology has the ability to complete highly skilled work that was traditionally expensive. It could lead to new scientific breakthroughs and a drastic fall in the price of goods and services. But there remains a question. If these systems are so good and become better than us at our jobs, what are we going to do? This is probably one of the hardest questions to answer. The solution could involve a natural creation of whole new industries that don't exist yet, or an enabler for us to do even more intellectual work than ever before. That's a whole discussion for another day. Regardless, the discovery and recognition of patterns and regularities in the world around us lies at the heart of scientific and technological progress. It's how we advance and innovate. It's also an area where deep learning excels. The question isn't whether or not deep learning is useful, but what is the limit to creativity in its applications? So that just about rounds out the end of the video. I want to thank Intel for helping out with this video, and if you want to check out the Intel Compute Stick, you can click the link below. I'll be interested to know if you guys have come across any interesting applications of deep learning lately. I think this is one of the most interesting fields to watch, and it's been advancing faster than anything I've ever seen. Alright, thanks for watching. This has been Dagogo, you've been watching Cold Fusion. If you've just stumbled across this channel and you're here for the first time, feel free to subscribe. Cheers guys. Have a good one.